With Cata Classic right around the corner, we have an exclusive preview of what the meta will look like in Season 9. This latest expansion of Classic WoW will actually be played in the last patch of Cataclysm, which was a pretty big deal at the time and would include the addition of Transmog and some big buffs to Mortal Strike effects. Oh, and the rise of Mitch Jones. But here's the thing, we're going to be playing on a Season 11 patch, but in Season 9 gear. Which means our tier lists might be a bit different than what you expect. In case you weren't aware, Skillcapped was founded right before Kata was released, and hosted hundreds of guides made alongside some of the best players of the time. Now, over a decade later, we're excited to announce our brand new Classic site, which comes with a complete add-on profiler for the latest version of Classic WoW. That's right, the same add-on pack we developed for Dragonflight is available right now for Kata. And over the coming weeks, we will be updating our website with class courses for Season 9, including detailed damage, CC, and playstyle guides aimed to get you right into the action. As always, we will be offering a 400 rating gain guarantee to make sure you get the rank you've always wanted in Classic WoW. And for a limited time, we're offering an exclusive discount using the sign-up links below. For now though, back to the video. First up, we have our best melee for Cataclysm PvP. Of the lineup of possible choices, there are two obvious candidates. The first is actually Feral Druid, which might seem pretty shocking if the last time you played Cataclysm was in 2011. Feral is one of those specs that at the time wasn't as developed as it could have been, but private server players have managed to get better and better at exploiting its key strengths, the first of which is damage. Feral's sustained damage is remarkably good, especially in the early stages of the expansion, where bleeds can do an enormous percentage of someone's HP. Now I know what you're thinking, Feral's had big bleed damage back in the day, how could it be any better? Well, one key gameplay adaptation players learned was just how broken it was to abuse snapshotting. This is an old mechanic that simply allows you to stack a bunch of modifiers together and crank up the damage of your dots even after any buffs expire, and Ferals are able to do this with Tiger's Fury, on use trinkets, and even the tailoring cloak enchant, all leading to an insane amount of bleed damage which wouldn't be a problem on its own if it wasn't for Feral Druid control. That's because the return of predatory strikes means druids have instant cast cyclones once more to go alongside their newly added interrupt Skullbash. Seriously, we shouldn't need to explain just how strong instant cyclones can be, especially in Kata's final two seasons where burst damage is incredibly high. But whether it's used to set up a kill or slow down the enemy team, Cyclone is insanely strong. Of course, none of this would even matter if druids flopped like a fish in Cataclysm, but their survivability is just the icing on the cake. Between a 1 minute bark skin, survival instincts, the reworked frenzied regen, and the simple fact that they take 20% additional healing, feral druids are very tough to take down, especially in any of their meta comps where they can play with warlocks, mages, hunters, and even warriors who give them additional tools to stay alive. Now, the only real downside of Feral and Kata is the fact that they can't shift out of roots without using dash or stampeding roar. But hey, no other melee can shift out of roots anyway. So if you truly want to be competitive, Feral Druid might actually be the best melee in the game during Season 9 and possibly the entire expansion. The only other contender for that title is Sub Rogue, which is probably the most iconic spec in the Cataclysm era. Players like Wreckful and Nelio were innovators of this class at the time, and some might argue that Rogue actually hit its peak in WoW's third expansion. That's because their playstyle is really unlike anything that would come before or after it, thanks to the key introduction of two new abilities, Recuperate and Combat Readiness. While the self-heal might seem humble on its surface, it is a key part of the rogue's playstyle in Cataclysm, turning the class from being flimsier than a small twig into a Giga Chad Terminator killing machine. The addition of Combat Readiness also meant rogues can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other melee. Seriously, Cata rogues are just built different. On the back of new defensive power, sub rogues are able to play much more aggressive, staying in the fight much more like a brawling melee than the careful tactician we've gotten used to over the years. This is all backed up by their ridiculous burst damage, where Shadow Dance is one of the cooldowns you will need to track with an air horn. But unlike modern expansions where rogue damage is tied into combo point spenders, Kata rogues do an insane amount of damage with their generators, and because of key talents that buff ambush and backstab, rogues can do a continuous stream of bursts during their lockdown. And oh yeah, rogues are obviously masters of control. Kata is the expansion that introduces the iconic smoke bomb ability, alongside Glyph of Blind and an extended Garrett Silence. And by the way, smoke bomb can even be reset with preparation, so rogues will have at least two smoke bombs in most games, one to force your trinket and a second to kill you once your trinket is down. And as one of the few classes with immortal strike, rogues are pretty much a jack of all trades, fitting well into a wide variety of comps like RMP, RLS, Thug Cleave, and are even a backbone of everyone's most feared comp, triple DPS. 
Seriously, you can't really go wrong playing Rogue in Cataclysm. It might actually be their best expansion, or at the very least, the one where they can actually press W all game and not get punished for it. Feral, Druid, and Sub Rogue are without a doubt the best two melee in Season 9, so our third pick is a bit of a wild card. So we will give you two options, with one you might not expect, but hear us out. Red Paladin and Arms Warrior, who are both at their peak strength in Season 9. Red Paladin plays a fairly unique role in Cataclysm, acting almost like a support spec rather than a pure DPS. Of course, the nature of being a hybrid lends itself to the support role, but Red takes it to a completely different level. The introduction of Holy Power includes the addition of Word of Glory, and two talents that buff the living hell out of it. Selfless Healer allows it to heal 50% more when used on other friendly targets, and Last Word will increase the crit chance of Word of Glory on any target who is low on HP. The combination of these two talents allow Rhett Paladin to literally top an HP bar in a single global instantly as a melee DPS. Now, because of this, Rep Paladins are another backbone to infamous triple DPS comps, where they not only act as a bursty DPS, but also a pseudo healer. Oh yeah, and their damage is no joke too. Kata brings with it the introduction of two new cooldowns to go along with Avenging Wrath, Zealotry to spam those Templar's verdicts, and Guardian of Ancient Kings to summon a badass angel dude to help train Disc Priests. Altogether, these abilities will give Rhett Paladins a massive damage spike, and the holy power generation from Zealotry can even be used to keep their team alive. Because Selfless Healer is so strong, Rhett Paladins are usually the kill target in most games, but are still remarkably tanky since they not only stack resilience, but also have a nifty cheat death mechanic with Sacred Shield. So if you're willing to play under pressure and have a healer mindset, Rhett Paladin will be a great spec to main in Season 9. Now, you might be wondering about Arms Warrior. If you played in 2011 or watched any tier list ranking warriors in PvP, you might already know that ARMS is far from the best melee in Cataclysm. But Season 9 will actually be the best season for warriors by a long shot. That's because in the later stages of the expansion, casters get a massive power spike from PvE gear, which causes some melee to fall behind. But in Season 9, PvE gear isn't nearly as impactful, and as a result, warrior damage is at its relative peak compared to everyone else. The game is also slightly slower, which allows any defensive weaknesses to be overcome with careful proactive play. Warriors get a few iconic abilities in Kata, including Heroic Leap, which basically replaces Intercept, then Colossus Smash as a highly efficient burst ability, and finally Throwdown, a unique stun and knockdown effect. Warriors also keep their utility in Cataclysm, which means playing like a support role at times. Finally, even though casters might be their bane later on in the expansion, most warrior builds will be playing with Gag Order, which ties a silence effect into both Pummel and Heroic Throw, giving warriors a ranged interrupt of all things. Anyway, even though arms might lose some steam later on, it will definitely be one of the strongest melee in the early expansion. With our best melee out of the way, let's move on to ranged DPS, where things get a bit tricky. And if you want to blame someone, blame this guy. Yes, a stupid little monkey. In case you weren't aware, Hunters in Cataclysm are able to reset some of their cooldowns by dismissing and then resummoning a different pet, allowing them to have virtually zero CD on Roar of Sacrifice and their monkey's signature ability, which quite literally throws sh at the target, blinding them for a few seconds. It's called Bad Manor for a reason. No matter what though, having almost permanent uptime on Roar of Sac and an infinite stream of CC to throw at enemy players makes Mark's Hunters absolutely god tier. Pet dismissing tech was abused over 10 years ago by hunters at the time, but this playstyle continued on private servers on a completely different level, where it wasn't uncommon for hunters to literally summon over 4 different monkeys in the first minute of each game. We wish we were joking. But here's the thing, right now this doesn't seem to be working on the beta, and even if it does, it could become one of those things Blizzard nerfs later on. Hashtag no changes. Now, before you toss Mark's Hunter to the curb, we're still projecting it to be one of the best range specs, even if Pet Dismissing is dead on arrival. Even without the quote-unquote bugs, Mark's doesn't mess around and has one of the best CC chains in the game with monkey blinds, scatters, freezing traps, and silencing shots all ready to be chained together on a poor healer. You thought Micro CC was bad in Modern WoW? Hunters basically invented it. Their burst is no joke too, since Chimera Shot definitely packs a punch. And thanks to talents like Careful Aim, Hunters can sequence a huge amount of burst damage out of their newly added camouflage ability, making them a staple in comps like Thug Cleave, Jungle, and Triple DPS. So even if spam dismissing isn't possible by launch, Mark's Hunters can still make up for it with their damage and control alone, and will be a contender for best range spec in Season 9. One spec that could keep Hunters at bay for Season 9 is Affliction Warlock. 
If we took a time machine back to the past, Warlock was actually considered the best caster during Cataclysm, especially in later seasons where PvE gear became quite pervasive. But even in Season 9, Warlocks are still going to be really good. Will they be the best? It's not really clear. But what is certain is that Affliction is definitely in the top 3. This is due in part to the fact that Warlock is quite tanky. Between Soul Link, Demon Armor, and the simple fact that Warlocks have a teleport in an older expansion with more Z-axis abuse and less melee mobility means that altogether you can't really kill them easily. Kata helps turn Affliction into a dampener in an expansion before dampening would even exist. Just like Feral Druids, Warlocks benefit enormously from the iconic snapshotting mechanic. And thanks to their new abilities like Soul Swap and Demon Soul, UA locks can spread empowered dots across multiple targets and really crank up the damage meters. And thanks to their dispel protection from unstable affliction, they help define the Rock Cleave archetype. No matter what comp they play, you can count on Affliction Warlocks doing an insane amount of AoE damage, which makes them a perfect pair for pretty much everything. Expect to see them do well with Feral Druids, Sub Rogues, Mages, Shadow Priests, and even Unholy DKs. Again, you can't really go wrong playing Warlock in 3v3, and you will definitely have a place on any 5v5 or RBG comp too. It's hard to say which expansion was best for Affliction Warlock, but Cataclysm might be it. Alright, now to wrap up ranged DPS, we have another dilemma. We know that both Fire and Frost will be good, and you can't really go wrong either way, but if you truly want a min-max, Fire is arguably the better option. Towards the end of the expansion, Fire definitely starts taking its lead over Frost, thanks to having slightly better PvE gear and, more importantly, the critical strike values needed to make the spec feel more fluid. Ironically, both Frost and Fire play around the same mechanic. Shatter. But unlike Frost, who wants to Mitch Jones shatter people in the face, Fire likes to do some fishing with Shatter, and reel in some hot streak procs by making their Scorch and Fire Blast crit. Once this happens, that means being able to shatter an instant Pyroblast, giving them every card of Exodia to unleash their true nuclear power. This is because Cataclysm turns Combustion into an ability that combines all the Fire Dots on the target into a separate Omega Fire Dot that can be spread to nearby targets with impact. So unless your healer is mashing Dispel, this combo can quickly wipe out everyone's HP. And of course, mages are just good at doing all the classic mage things in Cataclysm, and with a control kit as big as their egos, they have absolutely no problem dictating the pace of the game, especially with Dragon's Breath, which can be sequenced into an instant cast Ring of Frost, which you already know makes them a perfect pair for rogues and wizards alike. Even if you hate fire, we'd still like to stress that Frost will be a great option too. This is the expansion where Frost Mages have bigger and better shatters, with a playstyle revolving around big bursty crits and taking someone down 100-0 in a smoke bomb. So whether you want to be Mitch Jones or Hansel, Kata is a great expansion for Mage. Alright, congrats on making it this far. Now it's time to go over the truly broken role in Cataclysm, Healer. If you played Wrath, you might remember a spec like Holy Paladin and think, yeah, that's broken. But here's the thing, healers overall are even better in Cataclysm. Well, most healers. Without a doubt, Resto Shaman is the best of the best. As a quick history lesson, there was this team who made it to BlizzCon in 2011 called Dina Trio, which stood for Do Nothing and Win. This was an obvious joke, but at the time, Shamans were the healer that seemed to do the most healing without doing much at all. Kata is the expansion that not only gives Resto Shamans unleashed life, but gives everyone their new stat called Mastery, which for Resto Shaman is called Deep Healing, increasing healing done to targets who are lower on HP. What does this mean? It means that getting kicked as a shaman or eating a CC chain is not that big of a deal considering your healing spells get massively stronger the lower someone is. That's not to mention that Cataclysm gives the spec its iconic emergency button with Spirit Link Totem, which can be countered with Smoke Bomb, but very few healers even come close to having such an amazing life-saving ability. Kata also gives every healer a magic dispel, which is a big deal for Resto considering its neat passive called Cleansing Waters, which turns every dispel into a small heal, and with Warlocks, Shadow Priests, and Mages all running around putting magic debuffs on everyone, this single passive can represent an enormous amount of healing. In addition to Wind Shear and Grounding Totem, Resto Shaman is arguably the best anti-wizard healer. Now, some of you out there might be pointing out that Resto Shamans don't really do any damage, and while that's true, you have to remember one thing. Who cares about doing damage when you have totems that can buff your broken DPS anyway? Seriously, there might be some truth into doing nothing and winning, since shamans not only do some great passive healing, but passively buff their DPS too. Seriously, Resto will basically fit in every single 3v3 comp imaginable, and it's definitely worth picking up if you want to be ultra competitive. Now, even though healers aren't known for damage in Kata, Disc Priest can actually pack a punch and is our second healer in the top three. Disc maintains its identity as the true offensive support healer in Cataclysm, having arguably the best defensive dispel in the game, which can remove two debuffs at a time, enabling their DPS free reign over the arena. 
But on top of this, Kata also gives every priest the iconic Mind Spike ability, which can be sequenced three times in a row for an almost guaranteed crit on Mind Blast, turning into a wombo combo if the target drops into death range. But what really defines Priest in Kata is something people might not remember. It's PvP set bonus. Every time priests shield themselves, they get a 4 second freedom, which can be used to make key offensive plays with Psychic Scream or to simply kite away from danger. The main downside of the spec is that it is pretty vulnerable to getting trained, especially by nasty DK cleaves which have no problem pressing W all game, but getting trained as a healer in Kata is a pretty universal problem anyway. The Priest's defensive kit is actually pretty good, preserving its iconic pain suppression, which is joined by a somewhat weak but still useful barrier and a definitely useful aura mastery tied into inner focus. And let's not forget the real reason anyone plays Priest in Kata, Life Grip. With rogues being everywhere to drop smoke bombs and with the Z-axis actually being relevant, this spell can be a game-winning ability. So if you're wanting to play a more offensive healer, turn to Disc Priest and then find yourself a bunch of Rogue, Mage, Hunter, Feral Druid, and maybe even Ret Paladin friends if you're feeling spicy, and you will surely have a great time in Kata. Finally, taking our final spot as the best healer to main in Kata is Holy Paladin, who might actually be at its peak in Season 9, where melee cleaves will reign supreme. As a massive brick wall of CDs, Holy Paladins are designed to take on a metagame where Rogues, Hunters, Warriors, Ferals, and DKs will be all over the ladder. One key addition to their wall of cooldowns is Guardian of Ancient Kings, which will duplicate the next five heals while even doing some cleave healing in the process. Seeing this cooldown in isolation might seem a bit underwhelming until you learn how paladins actually heal. Cataclysm introduces the new holy power system and the iconic Word of Glory ability, which paladins can abuse with a passive called Last Word, giving it a massive chance to crit on any targets low on HP. When these critical Word of Glories are duplicated by Guardian, Holy Paladins can top someone from the brinks of death in a single global. Holy Paladins are also quite durable thanks to a 30 second cooldown on wall, which combined with a sprint from Speed of Light allows Paladins to move across the map to make key offensive plays. Really, the main downside of Paladin is Caster Cleaves, which will become more pervasive in Season 10 with the introduction of the Legendary Staff. But until then, expect to see Paladins running around in highly aggressive comps like PHDK, TSG, and Kitty Cleave. Before we wrap up, you really don't want to miss this opportunity to get a massive head start on the competition with our rating gain guarantee. Our courses and arena commentaries have everything you need to help you reach your goals. Regardless of what class you decide to main, we've got you covered. One subscription gets you access to all of our games, allowing you to stay ahead of the competition no matter what expansion you play. Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.